Hello and welcome to Mr Tweed's workshop where today we try and identify a mystery thread. Identifying threads nowadays when you're dealing with uh, cars and bikes isn't, isn't much of a problem because metrification is fairly standard across the world throughout all the manufacturers. So the majority of threads are going to be sort of metric coarse. Occasionally you get metric fine, but you can sort of just tell by looking at them um, that, that it's a, a, a diff slightly different thread. And if you you know just measure the shank of the bolt, and you'll you'll you know you'll, you'll know you'll know what it is. So sort of uh, shank of the bolt is sort of just saying saying here. So this this is just below five millimeters, but you know that's a five millimeter bolt. And uh, so, so you can go and buy one or buy a tap and die to uh, to make a new nut or a new bolt. Um, the problem arises in older stuff, especially pre-70s. Um, the Americans were imperial, their own UNC, UNF, and, um, and the British, well, the, the British had many, many standards. Um, I've got a Norton over there, and there's at least four standards of thread on that. We've got Whitworth, uh, BA, uh, UNC, and BSF, and it, it sort of, you know, the list goes on. Uh, so when you sort of got a nut or a bolt that you, you need to uh, replace, um, or, or you want to make a new one, it, it can be a real problem. Um, so, because what I want to do is, I, I've got this uh, brake rod off a 1929 Riley, and it's slightly, I think at some time, the, there was a longer brake rod, I think it's had a longer brake rod fitted, and there's just no adjustment left on the, uh, on the turnbuckle there, well, I've wound it off a bit, but they're, they're almost touching, so there's, there's no adjustment left at all. I don't think they're stretched because it's a nice sturdy rod, so I think it's a possibility of just a different parts being fitted. So need to identify this. So you know how how do you go about it, or how do I go about it? I mean, some some of the old boys have that skill. They just they'll just look at a nut and a bolt, and they'll go, "Oh, that's a five sixteenth Whitworth," just just like that. But if you dabble in all different things, then you don't stand a chance because there's so many different standards out there. So if you know an engineer, or we've seen engineers, they will have in their top pocket, no doubt, a Zeus Precision data book which is a whole host of handy things for engineers and um, sort of drilling radial holes and all kinds of things like that. But the, the, the majority of it at the beginning is all different uh, thread standards. Yeah, so uh, let's, uh, let's have a look at this and how we identify a thread. So I've done a little diagram of uh, what we're looking for to try and help us identify a thread. And they are the outside diameter of the thread will be measured across either the shank of the bolt or the teeth of the thread just to keep in mind that it will be slightly undersized so if we know it's a metric bolt and it's just under five millimeters we know it's a sort of five millimeter thread and then the same for imperial measurements um, the next thing is the pitch which is the amount of teeth and it's amount of teeth per inch on imperial threads or the amount of teeth per millimeter on metric threads and then the last thing we sort of need to know um, is the angle. So imperial threads are 55 degree angle and metric threads are 60 degree angle. There's a few, uh, you know, few differences occasionally, but you'll hardly ever come across on all the standard threads. It's uh, 55 degrees imperial and 60 degrees for metric. Okay, so we need a few tools to do that. And the first one is, like I said, is the uh, Zeus data book which not only has at the front, which we use a lot, is conversions from imperial to uh, metric decimalization, which is handy. But it then goes on to list a lot of the common threads, metric and imperial, with all, all the sort of data and information you need to try and help you identify the thread that you're trying to find. Yeah, so these are available from uh, good engineering suppliers and um, I think even Amazon have them, and they're about five pound, uh, you know, and it's worth worth having one in a workshop. They're such a handy little thing to have laying around. And the next thing is the uh, thread gauge, which this is a double-sided one, so it's 55 degrees one side for Whitworth and Imperial, and on the other side it's 60 degrees 
for metric threads. Okay, the metric ones are quite common to get hold of. Uh, imperial ones, you might need to sort of look around at a decent engineering supplier to um, to get hold of one. And then the last thing is to measure the uh, diameter of vernier, vernier calipers or a micrometer, you know, whatever you have lying around. Doesn't have to be an expensive set like this. A uh, cheap £12 sort of set from DIY store will do the job just as well. Okay. And here I've got two bolts just to show you the difference between angles. If you look, the top one is metric and the bottom one is imperial. And you can just see the sharpness, the difference in sharpness between the imperial at the bottom and the metric one at the top. So this is your 60 degree thread and this is your 55. So even just a sort of visual glance can uh, give you a clue to, to what type of thread it is. Okay, so what shall we do is we'll measure one of the bolts, change it to metric, we'll measure the metric one, so we'll measure the shank of the bolt, and it's just just under 10 mil. So we know that's a, uh, you go right at the top of the bolt, yeah. So we know that's 10 mil, so it's a metric bolt, and we've got our thread gauges. I've already measured it so I know. And then what you do is you just put line the teeth up with the thread and if it's the right one it should drop in like that perfectly. If you go one size above and one size below you know the difference is it's quite plain to see this it won't won't even go in there and then the wider one that won't go in either the original one sits in perfectly like that so it's a 1.5 pitch so that's 1.5 threads per millimeter so if we go into the book we know it's metric so we have a look at our metric course tables go down to 10 millimeters and then move along to the pitch 1.5 so we know that's a 10 mil metric course thread. So you could, you know, get a nut for it or buy a tap for it to make a nut. Okay, and then this is how we do the imperial one. Change the size. Zero it down. Three seven six O. So this is where the book comes in handy with the conversions. We'll go 3760, which is just above 3 eighths. So we know that's 3 eighths of an inch imperial thread. And then we put our thread gauge in. Got two here, there's a 22. Won't go in. Then we've got a 20. And that fits perfectly. So it's 20, 20 gauge. So 3 eighths, 20 gauge. And look in our book again. You can go down and you can sort of check, you know, you can check with a Whitworth. So, so we could have a look here, 3 eighths. It's a 16 gauge, so it's not a Whitworth thread. U and F, what have we got here? So we go three eighths. It's 24, so it's not, not a UNF. BSF, they go three eighths, 20 pitch. Okay, so there we go. So we know that's a BSF thread. So same again, we're going to buy a nut for it or buy a tap for it to make a nut. 
So now we've got that knowledge, we can get our brake shaft, which is here, got sitting here. So measure the shaft. Three two oh five, and now for paint. I'm looking on book again. Three two. It's a little bit big. Let's measure across the. I think the paint's giving me a false reading. There you go. Three one three one ten. Look at our book again, 3110, there, yeah, just below 5 sixteenths. So it's a 5 sixteenth thread. We've got a thread gauge, I haven't measured it before, so it's a bit of time. Three one ten. 22 threads per inch and then we look in our book and draw BSF 5 sixteenths and then threads per inch 22 so I now know this is a BSF 5 sixteenths thread and I have ordered a tap and die set for it so I can cut a thread further along and shorten the rod. So that's how I identify threads. So I hope it's been helpful and uh, see you soon.